works for me. In, Thank you all. In, in case that has you like, like, like tap out and say, I gotta go someplace else. Um, okay, so welcome everybody here. Uh, uh, Monday, June 13th, Recreation Commission meeting. Uh, I would like to first uh, uh, move to approve the May minutes, the minutes from May, which were sent to us immediately after the May meeting. Uh, um, and that was, Yusuf was not there that day. So I hope you had a chance to take a look and review, ask any questions, but uh, motion to approve those minutes. I'd, I'd second. <clears throat> uh, take a vote. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is, oh, did I'm anyone sorry. have corrections or? Any, did, any corrections? I did, I did not, so. Any corrections for the minutes for May? Then, um, then let's vote uh, all in favor of, of approving the May minutes as is. Raise your hand. Yes, from here. Sorry, my camera's not working. No, you're okay. Uh, all oh, the same because I wasn't there, right? So, yep, all who oppose. Okay, uh, May minutes have been entered into the record. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, everybody, for the vote. Um, uh, so today, the piece that I have Noah here, I wanted to get him involved early uh, and we can let him go after that if necessary is he is uh, you know, a number of different things for our department for people who don't know him, anybody here who maybe doesn't know Noah. Noah was our acting sports director for the time that overlaps into my coming on. He has been heavily involved in a number of different aspects of the program, including our sports program, of course, including uh, Cherry Hill and after school, and he's been involved in this case directly. He's been the the point person for putting together the the Independence Day celebration for UMass. Uh, he has a, a background knowledge of how we how we've operated that in the in the past. Uh, he has he certainly has uh, you know connections out with the community that's been. Uh, resourcing the, the event for us. And so I did wanna, I, you know, my saying what we, we have going on here is I think too much me. I did wanna invite Noah to, if nothing else, to get him uh, a little FaceTime with you, the commission. Um, and so uh, I, I'll basically let Noah introduce the, the, uh, the event and, and we can go from there with any questions that you may have directly about the event or anything connected. We have a little bit of time to talk about it if necessary. You may have some questions. So Noah. Thank you very much, Ray, and thank you all for your time. Um, so like Ray said, uh, I've been with Amherst Recreation or as it was then known, LSSC for about five years, starting as in my freshman year at UMass. Uh, uh, I was a sport management major, so I came in through the sports route, but quickly, picked up uh, over the summer in the 4th of July. So I ran it in 2018 and 2019 and was planning on coming back to run it in 2020. Unfortunately, other circumstances uh, occurred. So with that in mind, um, my hope going, my plan going into this year was to leverage kind of the connections that we had existing prior and create a, an event that's more COVID friendly um, considering that we are still in a global pandemic. Um, also, additionally, we knew that we would face some struggles in the form of sponsorship. Um, in my senior year at UMass, I was a part of a sponsorship organization for the department, and it was very difficult securing them with partners that we had had longstanding connections with. And so we expected similar difficulties going in here. Um, and so with that in mind, we kind of focused on what sort of areas we can do to face cost reduction and also help facilitate a better environment for um, our fairgoers. And so notable changes for this year is uh, probably most notable would be the lack of the Amherst Community Band. Um, we made contact with the director and a, a large portion of their uh, membership is in, in some form of uh, compromised position and in either due to age or uh, preconditions. And so it, given the nature of how they operate, which is come one, come all, it felt like a, uh, a bit of a gray area in terms of how it would be executed in a safe uh, safe manner for this year. 
So we had the calls, we kept the connection, and he's will be delighted to return for next year, but we agreed that it's not a great fit for this year. Um, so that being said, that allowed us to reduce our normal stage order, which is a uh, for the stage and audio production, that's usually a, 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 our second biggest expense after the fireworks. Um, and so not having a 150 person uh, band on stage allowed us to significantly reduce it. Uh, a side benefit of that being it significantly reduces the kind of focal point that having a stage in the middle of your event would create and allows people to disperse more evenly throughout the fairgrounds. Um, and so we are keeping the similar sort of uh, event layout from 2019, if anyone is familiar. Uh, in 2018, we had had a format that we had used for about, to my knowledge, 15 years, as long as I've been going to the fair. Um, and with the construction of the sports bubble put up behind McGurk Stadium, that altered where the firing spot was and significantly changed the layout of the fields. That will be kept for this year. And so the general uh, layout is for a, essentially a promenade-like uh, walk-in from the parking lots uh, surrounding McGurk and into the fairground where it will open up and allow people to disperse to their uh, designated sitting spot and viewing. Um, we will still have some uh, amenities and features that we have always offered in the past. There is the kids carnival. Um, we will have food from vendors and their food trucks. Um, and we are working on providing some sorts of kind of give outs and we are uh, working with our sponsors and partners to provide a raffle and so hopefully some form of silent auction for this year. Um, and as always, there will be fireworks. And if anyone has any questions, I'd be delighted to answer. Is there any, in the absence of the band then, is there any entertainment, other kind or? Yeah, so. I don't know what, been, but yeah. We've been in negotiations with a few different groups. Um, a few we either haven't been able to reach a fair price on. Um, that's another factor that's changed, the price for our, um, our performances has significantly gone up and that has kind of affected our budget. We are debating whether we want to up on our offer or uh, just go for kind of an MC event. Um, and just with uh, the audio company can provide some form of kind of royalty free playlist. That may be our best uh, kind of lowest cost option at this point. Um, and I've shared already, I should, I should, make sure that I, I, there's one other major change here uh, and that's the date. Uh, and so that also has had an effect on some of the decisions that we've made. We no longer is the event itself on the holiday, July 4th. Uh, I think the last I spoke to you all is that we were planning for the July 1st date, which is, which is the date, the rain date is the 8th. We intend to have no kind of rain date. So, <laughs> so bear with us. Um, July 1st is the Friday before the holiday weekend. And so what that, uh, one of the things that puts NOAA and our planning committee in a little bit of a bind on is that that's a work day. And so, and so in terms of getting volunteers to come in and work at the end, we usually have had our camp volunteer, our camp staff comes and volunteers to operate uh, the kids carnival and to operate the hot air balloon and to operate the uh, to, to basically basically serve as on site volunteers for us in a lot of different capacities parking and and everything else um, uh, and so we have an extremely limited uh, 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 group of volunteers to to pull from it is again it's a work day we don't know how that's going to affect overall the the the, the crowd that comes out on a holiday, they might be there waiting when we get ready to go at five o'clock, six o'clock or whatever, and they might be droves there, but that's the time where people are getting out of work or out of their other opportunities. UMass is technically, it's not, the school's not in session, but that is a, that is a work day on Friday before long weekend. And so, and so there's a little bit of a, of a you know, holiday on a normal day uh, conundrum that we were facing here that affected some of our decisions about where we spent our money and how we how we uh, invest those costs, how we spread those costs around. Um, I I'm 
I, I'm obviously, this is my first time going through it and being in a planning of something like this large and this scale, being involved in it. And I, like it, it is an exciting thing for us to be putting on. I've talked to Paul Bachman a few times about it and he's, he's made, he, he, he definitely has made it clear that he's a big fan of fireworks and, and, you know, there's no way that we weren't going to find some way to make that happen for ourselves. Um, but I think, I think it's, uh, you know, certainly with, with Noah's expertise, uh, I think, I think we've been able to create as much of a, of a, uh, uh, you know, of a, of a consistency, we create some consistency between what we're offering this year and what we've offered in the past. Sarah? It will, it will be lots of fun. I'm, I know it will. Remind me what time it's going to start then. Uh, so as an unofficial, well, unofficial, but a soft start at five o'clock. Uh, okay. Again, as that's the end of the workday for UMass, we still have to square away with a few of their departments to gain final on that um but that will be getting cleared up shortly um and then really the heart of in years past things really kick off around six o'clock and so like six to eight are the kind of high buzz lots of traffic uh times and then nine is Fire. the fire. Fire. Yeah. fireworks is nine right great and remind me where they are being set off from now since it's yeah, so it's still behind McGurk Stadium. Um, the, the rules or regulations on fireworks are you need 100 feet of or 100 yards of clearance per inch of shell diameter. Um, we've been able to keep the same shells that we've always used in years past. So it's the same display. We've just had to rotate and kind of pivot the fairgrounds so that it can accommodate the shooting range. Thank you. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> so, so were you saying you're having trouble getting enough? Uh, people to staff it we we have enough to staff what we what we're putting out there there's been a few things that we thought about bringing back we definitely want to bring i'm trying to gather some a, 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 a secondary group of volunteers to come over and work the hot yeah. air balloon i love the okay. idea of doing the hot air balloon and it's a really great uh, uh relationship we have with uh remax that that has put on that hot air balloon in the past uh and so, and so that, I think that's that it, it's financially uh, uh, an obligation of ours to to continue that relationship. Um, but but it's also I think it's just a cool thing to offer right over by the kids carnival, right out on University on the on the mall there. Um, can you can you use the um, Amherst ambassadors to help with staffing? Oh, that's a great point. I will reach out to them. Um, a lot less strain on my basketball players, <laughs> but, uh, but we should, we can, we can definitely reach out to them and, and uh, uh, see if we can't get some volunteer. It's the nice thing about moving it off the July 4th is that there may be more interest in people. Like people don't already have sort of plans. I don't want to go and volunteer on a holiday, which is sort of a, we can we can force our workers to volunteer. <laughs> we can we can force the camp workers to come in and volunteer because it's part of the deal that they come in and work with us. But it can be hard to scrounge up people to come in on their holiday and and you know share on the on presum July 1st presumably there's no there's no pie eating contest, presumably. Yes, yep, no pie eating contest, no course. Is there some alter al alternative kids activity? Uh, yes, we do have the kids carnival, um, which we've had in years past. And so that is, that'll be situated on the Dallas mall, which is kind of part of the promenade. And so the idea for that is for it to exist as a sort of uh, set aside bubble of just interactions and kid friendly activities with goodie bag handouts and kind of things to keep the kids occupied. Is there Sarah. anything like, or, or have, have you considered something like a slip and slide if it's, it's a hot day, evening, I don't know. Um, we've had issues in the past with the slip and slide in that it typically can flood the fairground, just leaving it <laughs> and Um, But we do have plans for like the hot day. We keep uh, coolers of water loaded up that we will start driving around on our golf carts to everyone as it 
depending on how hot it is and kind of how uncomfortable it can get. Could there be something like a misting station? I don't know what it takes, you know, it's basically like a hose on a <laughs> yeah, um, or a sprinkler or something. Right. Just a thought, you don't have to. Yeah, it's worth looking into. Um, cool. Maybe if it's just in limited runs. Yeah. Uh, other questions about the uh, the holiday, the, the Independence Day celebration. Um, okay. Then um, uh, we I, part of the issues that we've been dealing with, and this is the the non-celebration part is Noah's also had to try and uh, coordinate all of the logistics of, of uh, you know, on a non-holiday about dealing with traffic and dealing with access and, and all those sorts of things. It's, we, I don't know how it's gonna compare to years past, but the number of people, Noah, do you know how many people have been there in the past? What were the estimates that we've gotten on attendance? Estimates have really been kind of shot in the dark, but the best number we've kind of come out with is about 15 to 20,000 in terms of total viewing um, of the fireworks. Um, and then on the fairground itself, anywhere from one to 5,000, depending on the time of day. So the, the, in, terms of, in terms of reaching out and, and that's a lot of eyes, which of course allows us uh, access to a bunch of businesses to, to say this, you know, you know, we have advertising space here for you. You can come over and help us. Uh, we've we've been soliciting for some uh, contributions and support from from uh, the wider Amherst community. Hadley's been very involved. Sunderland's been very involved. We've had a bunch of local towns because this is sort of this is sort of uh, something that stretches beyond us. Uh, there's been a partnership with obviously Hadley and Hadley Police and and. And uh, you know the the, the uh, emergency teams from from the general area. We've uh, you know all of UMass, the campus of UMass. It feels like it's all had their hands in here in some place. Uh, it's uh, it has been a, a complete team effort. Is the Amos Chamber of Commerce still trying to sell um, Amos gift cards? Yep. I don't know about that. At the, you mean at the uh, at the events or? Well, I mean separately? just in general, if they'd like to, if they'd yeah. like to uh, have a have a have a place or a way to sell Amos gift cards at the at this fair. Okay, it's worth worth asking. Um, Again, because of the number of people and the number of eyes out there, I think that there's a lot of, there's typically been a lot of interest for people to, to uh, participate in some way. If, in addition to the fact that it's a community event, that, that there's some benefit to just being a part of this large, large scale community event. This is a lot of people in the community that are coming together on this. Sarah? So this just popped into my head. Um, and it's a little out of left field, but um, I wonder if there could be a table or somewhere, maybe the League of Women Voters could do this, but for voter registration. I think uh, that it would be super, you know, all the time, anybody, it's the same form, you live in Massachusetts, fill out this form. You could, if we have internet, you know, access you can check your registration get people you know starting to be involved and um i think it could be some great outreach great. something actually relevant to july 4th something relevant to july 4th yeah. active participation lots of flag you know, little flags around historic no, nodding like like yeah you're on it or you thought of it yeah. what? historically we've always had the league of women's voters um, so we're hoping to have their return, still waiting to get confirmation on that. Oh, I, but, did, I didn't recall that at all. Well, wonderful. All um, right. Yeah, we will sit with our, uh, like, posted position right next to our information tent or one of them at the fairgrounds. 
Okay, well, I hope they would reach out to their, you know, neighboring leagues, like if there's one in Hadley or Sunderland or wherever, maybe, you know, they don't have to staff it all themselves. Mm. That's... Yeah, be a great civic, perfect for July 4th, in fact. You know what I, I just think now, and maybe that's a next year thing is, it'd be really cool if I just sit in a dunk tank all night and just harass people as they walk by. <laughs> Do I get to pitch? <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> Probably want to, right? <laughs> I, I could just, I'll oh. go and wear, you know what? I'll go and wear Northampton jerseys and stuff and just harass everybody as they walk by. <laughs> Hey, is, Yusuf, is there any way to have a little putting operation? A little, uh, golf, a little golf outreach? Somebody's got, and Nikki might have that answer, somebody's got like a mini, a portable mini golf thing that they've used at the library before, places like that. Um, it'd be great to promote Cherry Hill. Um, but then again, it's an elitist sport, so I don't know. I I, I, uh, I, I could have had. What, you don't want just anybody to. <laughs> technically, technically, Nikki is the one overseeing this operation, but Noah is is the point guy and much more interesting, anyway. So, uh, no, no, I'm just saying her. We, we, we will bring. We will bring. We'll bring Nikki yeah. the, the the question about whether or not we have something set up like a, as part of uh, as part of the festivities. And I, I don't think it was, you know, from this department, but I think she coordinated something at the library once. So she just might know to contact the person to ask is what I'm saying. Okay. I do have a putting game you can have if you want. I won't be here. I'll be away, but you're welcome to borrow it. Sweet. Uh, any other observations, questions, comments, uh, uh, relevant trivia for us? Stories, stories of uh, July 4th past that, um, that we should know as we get ready to start this. Oh, it, was the, it, it was the horrible incident of 1991 when <laughs> All right, then uh, we thank you, Noah. Uh, you can certainly hang out if you want to. I don't know why you would, uh, but you can hang out if you want to. Uh, any questions for us? You can you can uh, you can direct them direct. You can you can send them directly to Noah by email. You can send them to me. I can uh, I I typically answer all questions about July Fourth by first waiting and going to Noah and finding out what the answer should be, uh, but. Noah is the point person for that, and we will uh, we look forward to the event. Awesome. Well, thank you all for having me, and hope to see you all at the event. Thanks, Noah. Yeah, take it easy. Okay. Um, hey, we're right on time. Um, and so, so I I do think I've I've talked to Paul a few times about that July Fourth event, the July First event. We've Talked a bunch of times, and maybe even especially given the, uh, the the sort of fizzle that I've mentioned a few times about Winterfest, this is this is a chance for us to make sure that we that we uh, you know sort of steer a large public gathering here, and uh, recreation's involvement in this is I think really important, and it's my chance to 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 be involved with a major public event here for the first time after after the Winterfest situation. Um, yes, it's scaled back a little bit. There are little things that we've scaled back because of the date, because of uh, because of managing a crowd and pandemic, but but none of that is is uh, sort of bunting on the opportunity to to put a uh, a really big event on for Amherst and surrounding towns. And so that's that is our commitment here. It sounds like a fantastic event. I haven't been involved with, uh, I've never come over for the UMass fireworks, but um, 
but I did go on a walk through this week and just early last week and and uh, you know, looking at on on satellite maps for the last month is a lot different from getting in a golf cart and sort of taking the taking the trip around and seeing where everything was. I think it's all coming together in my mind now. So fair enough. Uh, is this an appropriate time? I think I think probably so. Uh, Let's stay on the schedule here. I'll open for the new business. There are a couple of things I wanted to uh, I wanted to put on the table here at the end, but I did send you all the operational goals that I I, I shared it with you all uh, probably a, I believe in March uh, a, a list of what I identified as being potential goals for recreation. So I am switching gears here from July first. Um, those operational goals I had a chance to think about at the time. I had a chance, basically some of them I was working on from week one when I, when I took the job in the fall. Uh, some of them are ones that we've, you know, it's, been a, it's been a challenge for me to try and make sure that I am prioritizing and trying to nibble some of them and nibble some of these. We've, we've, I, I think we've had a nice combination of being, of being incredibly ambitious in trying to get as many of these things on the table as possible. And some of them involve more effort and more work, certainly from, from programming and community standpoint, from planning standpoints, uh, uh, but also monitoring how much it was recommended last, last meeting. Just, uh, I remember you all essentially telling me, just make sure you know to, to, to measure your, your, uh, ambition a little bit, make sure that you have some sense of, of not spending so much out there and you're taking care of, of, of sort of a sequence with those. I heard you. And so this is, this is my, my honest self-assessment of where we are in those goals. I can share, I believe, um, try and share the screen. That's it. That is it. Did that work? Are you looking at my? Yep. Yes. Okay, good. <clears throat> so here we have the, uh, what I shared with you before. Um, the top of staff news is essentially, that's old news. I won't deal with that right now. That's still where we are in terms of wrapping up the, the, uh, the programs and moving into the summertime. Uh, pools open this week and, and, uh, with war has about a week's delay because of a pump problem. But pools are opening this week and camps are opening almost immediately after that. So it's, it is a transition time for us, we're right on it. But year one operational goals, two of them that I think we've spent the most time sort of planning and thinking about with staff and others are, are this communication system. For each one, I sort of talked about, this is the issue that led this to be a goal. Talked about the, the challenge that it presents in terms of how we, uh, you know, what is the challenge for us to come in there and steer it? And then what, as of right now, have we accomplished along those goals? Um, the communication system for all of these, for any and all of these that you feel uh, capable of, of adding input to, my next, the next thing that I want to do with this is to, is to sort of figure out what those next steps are from wherever we are. For some of them, we may be very advanced in the goals. For some of them, we may be a little bit farther back behind in terms of where we wanted to be at this point. But, uh, but your commission's advice in terms of what I should be looking at doing, what I, where we should be moving next with them is what I wanted to reach out and spend a little bit of time during this commission meeting looking at. Um, that communication system right now has essentially been introduced as a possibility. I know that the next thing that I do with that is going to be to sort of sit down with the, with certainly the, the, the active parties uh, in facilities, which would be Rupert, uh, Roy Clark, and, and, uh, and Erica, uh, uh, last name, uh, Rupert and Erica from facilities that are largely responsible for, for handling those facilities right now. I've mentioned that uh, trying to create a one-stop shopping where the town can schedule through us. That was a major point in my last conversation here uh, in May, in, in the May meeting, is that we want to try and, try and shore up the communications and make it so that we have, for the town's sake, some 
some uh, a, a one place for people to go and try and try and schedule field use. Carolyn, I see your hand. Now or Carolyn? I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, okay. I was saying, I'm not sure if or how this fits in. It may fit in a couple different categories. Um, and that is signage and website updating. Uh -huh. um, I've been walking around Pulpit Hill Road and uh, Puffers and Mill River and noticed a lot of signs about winter use. Yep. Um, a lot of signs looking really wear worn out. They don't have our new uh, you know, icons on them. Right. Uh, our, our identity system. So I think, I don't even know how that gets done, but I feel like we can, need a review of all of that. I can say that right now. It's not, it's not immediately one of these goals here. It has been something that we've been throwing out there. That signage is a bigger issue than I thought. I thought it was just something that people were saying, hey, signage, signage, it's become, I think I've, I've understood why it's a major issue now. We've got temporary signs at Mill River that just went up this weekend. Uh, as signage for that particular space. Um, I believe, I don't know anything about this for sure, but I believe that the capital request that we put in for signage, one of the things that we put in for capital was for uh, money for signage at uh, Cherry Hill, Mill River, to basically increase our signage, make better signs that, that, uh, that uh, part of it's caught into some, some of the wayfinding uh, the, the, there, there is a, there's a signage issue that goes beyond our department, but in terms of our request to sign our facilities, I think that the town is in the process of, of giving us an answer on signage. Uh, signage can very much, especially when you look at that second stage with rec spaces, my second goal there, that is one of the places that, you know, that that's one that essentially is a branding uh, goal is a chance for us to say, coming out of the pandemic, we are wreck. Coming out of the strategic plan and the name change and everything else, it's a chance for us to, as everybody comes back out, we are a recreation department and this is what we are, this is what we do. Um, those, uh, I think that signage definitely ties into our activating rec spaces with rec programming. Um, but in general, I think that it's an important piece of our our uh, department's uh, uh, next steps. Carolyn, follow up uh, or still the same hand? That sounds, that sounds like a good plan. I, I wanna remind you about the website too. I, I noticed okay. some things on there, but still, still LSSE appears a couple places, um, gotta go, you know. I will look through that. that okay. I will, what I'll do is right now, I'm making a note for myself to tie that in to rec spaces, which is the second it's the second uh, of the of the goals. I think that that most directly ties into our interest of of communicating rec spaces and branding recreation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, uh, well, first, a, a couple things just to add to that conversation. I think part of the a reason there are still occurrences of LSSE on the website, the town website, is that it's not only at on the Amherst Rec pages. There are other pages that refer that refer to Rec still as LSSE. So if there's a way for IT to crawl through the entire site, not just the Amherst Rec parts. Um, but of course, there's also going to be somewhere there should be an explanation of the name change because there are legacy documents, you know, that yes. we're not going to go back and change them <laughs> to say Amherst Rec, you know, and there are old news re press releases or mm -hmm. announcements or, or whatever. And um, people need to have somewhat some way to connect those two, or if they're searching for something and they're not finding it under by by looking for recreation maybe they tell us so that's just one thought i was going to yeah i was going to throw out the word <laughs> branding uh when you were talking about signage because um signage there's many elements or reasons to having signs what do you want to accomplish with the sign so that's um that's a big conversation but uh, my 
the reason I raised my hand was um, twofold. W one, about this first point, communication system. Um, maybe this is just an internal document, but I would suggest changing that communication system because it sounds like telephones or email for how you're communicating with your staff or something. I mean, if you mean a scheduling system for um, recreation and school, you know, town and school recreational assets, then I would just say that um, so it's very clear because um, it, it took a little bit longer than for me to figure out what impact you were talking about. Um, and then my question is, are these in are these in a order of priority for you or no, they're not they're not in a priority okay. order. Thank you for asking that. Okay. I think I dumped a couple early on, I dumped a couple of them late because they didn't involve as much of my active energy in and put it together, but it's not it is not a priority order. Okay, thanks. No, this is this is great. This is very useful. Um, I mean for us to see and I think for you for you to have done it. Um, and maybe you'll tell us after everyone else has commented how what what is your next step with this is like to how, how what's your plan to make progress with these but that's enough for me right now to uh, thank you for that the uh the the labeling communication system for session it is an internal memo and so so this is just a working document for myself right now i shared with you i shared with paul um, uh, the the reason why I think it began as communications, I completely understand. I think I think scheduling makes more sense to make it clear that this is primarily a scheduling uh, uh, priority for us. I think that I think its origin came because uh, you know, it came from what I saw as a lack of communication between those three parties: my uh, recreation, DPW, and school department. Uh, and so the, the, to have people moving back and forth across this little hallway here to go from our desk to facilities back to our desk, because we keep on steering them different ways. It felt to me when we were first, when I was first, first putting this together, that it's a matter of just none of us are really talking to each other. None of us really have what the information we have, we aren't sharing with them and they aren't sharing with us. And that's one of the things that I think each of them mentioned when I was onboarding back in the fall saying we, we need to try and find some way to get this back together and have, have all of these scheduling parties on the same page. And so for me, it, the origin was communications, but the function so of even it, before think, Even before you then communicate to the public, you have to know what internally, what, what are the responsibilities in the arrangement? Correct. But, yeah, okay. And so that communication system, the scheduling system that we're looking at there is, is a model for us to be able to use. We've already, in terms of accomplishments, as of now, it's only been introduced as a possibility. Our pursuit of new registration software has been done with this scheduling intention in mind. Uh, I've mentioned to you that we've been looking at new scheduling software that, that speaks directly to our munis, to, to the munis, uh, uh, financial software that the town uses uh, for more than just our scheduling purposes, but but as we look for a department software, uh, a department registration software, we've also been looking specifically for the possibility of something that will make scheduling easier for us. But even without that, uh, we are you know, we've already we've already discussed how we would situate it if it has to be all analog, which it won't be, but if it has to be like pen and paper, uh, then we wanna try and take it here and have our registration, uh, our registration coordinator and, and, our, and our desk be able to take care of that as long as we have the ability to, to not extend her too much uh, beyond the job that she's been doing for us. It's, it's a heavy responsibility now for the fall and the summertime, especially, but it obviously would be a, a concern even outside of those time, outside of those, that time period. And so the next steps for us, I know involve in there a conversation of, of you know, sit down at the table and planning session with facilities, uh, being a, the, the schedulers for the schools. Uh, 
I, I believe that DPW is already aboard with our with our interest as long as we have a chance to schedule maintenance stuff from that central site because DPW doesn't know always what their responsibilities are and the people who are who are signing up the coaches who sign up for the field sometimes don't know well dpw will come over and take care of the trash here well that's not trash response that's not dpw responsibility that's the school department's responsibility to take care of that there and so if we have a central software then we uh, we if we have a central scheduler then then we can send that send, we, it can be automatic from us that it goes to dpw your responsibilities are this this and this and we can communicate with them like like we're communicating with our own folks here, but without a clear understanding of whose responsibility it is, which I've brought up here the last couple of meetings, without understanding whose responsibility it is, then it just makes things harder for the for the town community. Um, for rec spaces, uh, in terms of our accomplishments there, uh, the interest there is basically branding and getting out there and really enlivening public space with with uh, with recreation programming and to be able to put our name, put our mission and put, put our interests out there and have people know that this is what this new recreation department is doing. Um, you know, you know, there have been some pretty good uh, events, at least small events here that aren't necessarily large uh, uh, motions here, but they've, they've been, I think, really successful without, without measurements here in terms of just how successful they are but but uh we have the pool collaboration i mentioned with the senior center uh which will be done in rec spaces uh mill river the boston street hockey clinic which i mentioned to you all was a fantastic day of bringing a bunch of different parts of the town together throwing rec up and and sort of celebrating it and promoting it and 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 uh, sharing sharing that experience through social media and other avenues the get out and play collaboration with jones library which nikki's been doing uh, uh, has been basically public spaces and and the uh cooperating with the library to do some events it's been at kendrick which is not necessarily it's certainly not our space our programming space specifically but it is certainly a chance for us to go out and and do rec at at recreational grounds salsa kendrick if anybody saw or heard about this i i wish i would have known more about this at our last meeting i would have i would have sent this uh, i would have, I would have uh, got you all involved in this in whatever way you wanted to be but there are more dates coming up yesterday saturday it was that uh, uh jose allen sports director has cooperated with a couple of members of the community that are putting on salsa dancing lessons over at Kendrick Park. Uh, it was, I believe, like about two or three hours on Saturday night over at Kendrick. Music in the down, music downtown, partnered with Max Colito uh, to to uh, bring people over afterwards. And I think there was like a discount uh, discount for for food service over there. So there's there's sort of a, a a really taken care of aspect to it. We got a, a number of, of uh, you know, emails and conversations. Paul shared with us a couple of people just thought it was one of the one of the really nice things that have happened over here in a little while. So we're going to get a chance to do. It. I think we have like three or four more dates of those coming up here this summer. Salsa night in the basically in the downtown Amherst. Uh, you know, whatever your levels are, <laughs> come on over and, and dance with us. Um, and then other recreational outreach that basically we've we've been trying to not just open parks and tell people, hey, there's stuff going on over here, but also to actively say recreation events over here, come on over here and do rec. Sarah. Yeah, how was, was the salsa at Kendrick advertised somehow? I don't, it was, it was, I missed it. it sounded, sounds wonderful. I'd love to. It was, uh, I think it, I think the, all the permit stuff, it was pretty late coming on. The first date was pretty abrupt after we got it and we did, uh, publicize it on our social media, uh, uh and the, the person who he's worth, the person who's the instructor, uh, I know was doing some outreach there, but I think basically this first time was like a word of mouth sort of thing and saying, well, 
you like that? Did you hear about this? Did we have more of these nights coming up? Um, get a chance. If I, I wish I was, I was out of, I, I wasn't available to come over and take pictures, but I, I wish I was. If, if there are pictures available, we'll be blasting those and, you know, sort of the good times of the town. We'll get the press out there. It would have been nice to have the press uh, to take a look at that. That's the sort of event that I think would be fantastic for them to latch on to. Uh, and so next steps there now or in the future, if anybody has any advice or suggestions as to where, what sorts of things we can be doing next, uh, I saw a hand, maybe. Carolyn? I was, when I see um, Cherry Hill and some uh, clubhouse thoughts, yep. um, it reminded me something be before you got here that's, that used to be the case was that integrity builders, um, integrity construction used to help us out a lot with sponsorships and so forth. And I don't know if they're still interested, but they might be a good place to talk to about some upgrades, you know, in in kind for um, the clubhouse to help with design or some work or lumber, something like that. You know, a lot of, a lot of people Integrity that design. used to give money might be able to give time instead. Um, any other, like, like any uh, more uh, depth detail into what Integrity's relationship with us has been. Um, In the last were, year or two? I don't know. D they were big, anyone, what's they, that? They, they were big supporters of Winterfest. Are they st are uh, they not recently or have they? Well, we, ha you know, we had a, the Winterfest committee was kind of a community-based committee. It wasn't really just, you know, uh, LSSE or Amherst Rec. So, there were a lot of people from the chamber, from the community, from the recreation department. Um, and so that's kind of how integrity came in as kind of an offshoot of the chamber. Um, but they do like to get involved in things like this. So, you know, when, when we had a program that they could kind of latch onto, they did. I don't know if they would do, you know, it's worth asking the question. It has to come from probably Ray or somebody like that. But, you know, maybe they would, but we're not on Cherry Hill yet, right? It's, uh, it's also a women-owned business, which might might be good for us. Yeah, hire someone like that, or work with them. It's good for me to know. Um, I guess that's a, also just an interesting point in general. If if companies that previously sponsored things like the Fourth of July um, or Winterfest are not feeling like they can sponsor them financially this year, maybe there's some other in kind help that they could provide. Are you thinking for the course, Carolyn, or are you thinking in general? I'm thinking Clubhouse because in Ray's notes here, he has a Clubhouse improvements, wants to make it more of a community center. And, you know, they're people with design expertise and a lot of building experience. So they may be just the right people, I don't know, to partner with. I, I am begging for for uh, sort of a, a nudge in that direction here. On that, as as I said, and Yusuf, I did get your message. Like Yusuf reached out to me a, a few weeks ago and let me know, hey, we started some momentum moving in the direction of Cherry Hill uh, early, right before the season started, and we've we haven't we haven't sort of picked up on that momentum, on that planning momentum that we had going into the year. And so that was one of the main ones on this list that I think, I think when I think about next steps and uh, you know, it's been backburnered partially because of, because of funding issues and because of what have you, but also because I've, I've been uh, sort of chasing these other things here um, and, and maintaining a steady open for the season is different from, from uh, generating that, that, that change, that progress in, in the uh, cultural part of it. Um, uh, and so the next steps there, we do have what I think for me feels like a, a long remainder of the season to really start throwing our, our weight behind, trying to investigate uh, uh, those, those basic upgrades, the physical space, 
uh, clubhouse entertainment, food, of course, always comes up when we talk about providing something for golfers, for members, for for greens fees folks, for community folks that just come by, making it a place where people can can uh, do more than just show up and golf. Uh, uh, there's been, uh, you know, there, there hasn't been a lot of action in terms of changing what we do there. Um, part of me is happy that it just hasn't fallen apart uh, as we as we put it back together and we've got new new faces up there. But uh, uh, you know, one of my one of our one of our goals going into that season was to reinvestigate what we're doing there. And so next steps there probably involve again revisiting a, a, a collection, a cross section of the users in the community there. Uh, part of that also involves some comparative, some comparative research with uh, municipal courses and what have you. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the big challenges there, I said limited cost and challenge, but one of the big challenges for us in this is that uh, it's gonna be really hard for us to invest large money in Cherry Hill uh, if it doesn't directly and immediately turn into revenue. It would be hard to justify throwing in a, a huge, we can't knock down walls and, 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 and build, a, build an annex to the, to, the, to the trailer up there or something, we can't, we can't reinvent this the fiscal space in in ways that in ways that we would if we had all of the money invested in that and we we knew that that would be would be uh supported by the town yusuf i i i think we got a little bit of we're making it more of a chicken and an egg kind of thing but I think what it needs is some, you know, somebody or a body of people and, and other towns have like, you know, advisory groups or, you know, like think groups or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of things that we could do right away that would generate money at Cherry Hill. And, you know, without, before we even asked for money, I know we wanted mowers and things like that. And that's important because without it, we're not going to be able to run the course <laughs> if, if the ones that we're running on, you know, that. I only I but, only ask for stuff if we need, if need is need, uh, I ask for needs. I understand, but I think my, I think what we're, we're running into is that people are judging Cherry Hill for what it brings in, but we're not putting any effort into bringing in some other stuff, you know, case, in, you know, we, we have nine signs, one on each tea, tea box, right? They're the, the big uh, granite signs that we have ads on there that were there like 20 years ago. For $25, we can buy a new ad. We sell it for $1,000. Let's say we can easily make five, six grand just on that, just that alone. You can put a sign in there saying this is available. You know, we take down what's on. So there's little things we could do that, you know, there's, we can make it more inviting to be on, on the deck. We can, um, you know, we tell people don't break outside alcohol, but we don't have a sign saying that we sell alcohol there, you know, hang out after you play. You know, so I think we're at a point now where everybody that's playing is, is the people, you know, our members, basically, you know, or we have, a, I don't, I, I don't know what the numbers are now, but I would imagine we have a lot, there is still a large greens fees. There is, but, you know, um, you know, I, I was telling somebody that they kind of, it feels like, you know, we own this food truck and we only use it for like family parties. You know, we're not putting it out there on the street and making money with it. It's something that actually can make money. I don't know what our budget is to bring in, but people at the end of the, of the season are going to judge it on what it did without us doing anything for it or with it. Um, you know, and you say people, that. go ahead. You know, like, you know, people always say, oh, they're, we're spending money on Cherry Hill and it doesn't make any money. Well, they could make money, but we have to kind of think about it. You know what I mean? And, 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 with all due respect to, to everybody that's in your office, you're all busy putting all these other programs together. You don't have time to say, okay, what can we do about Cherry? How can we make Cherry Hill make more money? It's just not in the, like, you don't have the capacity at this point because you'll be, you're busy building all the other programs. So that's understandable. You know, it's, it's too, so maybe if, you know, my thought was always, let's just get some volunteer think tanks to work on it and just come up with ideas. You know, we're not going to spend any money or they're not going to spend any money without being approved or whatever. But I think there's a lot of things we could do without spending money. But yeah, before we know it, the I, season <laughs> will be over. Not, uh, the back burner was not because, oh my goodness, we can't spend money. So no, no, what I are we gonna do with this I know. place? Uh, I know, but I, I mean, I, I, I watched one of those things about the money thing. And the problem with Cherry Hill is it has this perception, you know, we have some loud people in town that always 
you know, want to tear it down and put it away, you know, pack it up and, and spend money maintaining it as, as a trail. Uh, but which, you know, obviously isn't smart. But anyway, that's another story for another day. But that's the perception that we run into. So when we do say that we want to do some things with it, we're always going to run into that, that. And then the loudest people are the ones that are against it, even though there are a lot of people who are for it. They just don't have the forum to say, you know, some of the things they need to say about it. For my own clarification's sake, uh, when you say people are constantly saying, people are constantly saying, are the people you refer to, those people who are, you know, the, the parts of the community that are anti Cherry Hill, that, that are against the process, are you talking about like town hall and? No, no, I'm thinking planners? people are anti Cherry Hill, you know, okay. but, you know, it's a small town and everybody's got reach somewhere, you know, I mean, you know, for example, Irv, who's the one who started that whole conversation at that one meeting that I saw. You know, he, maybe he's doing it because he wants money for the school. I don't know, you know, if that's if that's the reason why he started that whole anti-Cherry Hill thing. But it, it picked up momentum right away, you know. And unfortunately, it's hard. Once it gets going, it's hard to to talk about it after. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's hard to stop it because you got to let it run its course. And all of a sudden, we're now stopping thinking about what, what else can we do there? Because now we have to let this thing calm down a little bit. Um, we either need people who to start a positive campaign, so to speak, you know, on purpose and figure out how to put the word out in a positive way or just do stuff that makes money. So that at the end of the season, which is going to come up before we know it, you know, we have some positive yeah. results to show. Uh, I think, I mean, uh, I, excuse me a second. You're not, anyway. Um, go ahead, Carolyn. I, I think those are really good ideas. And I think I, there are probably people right here you said, that could work on some brainstorming there. Also, mm -hmm. people who are the players, and I don't know who they are, who the long-termers are, um, but they have the best ideas and they know what they want or what they, you know, what they've seen in other places. And I think it'd be a great idea to tap them. Um, even if it's just a survey they pick up on the way back to their cars, you know. I spoke to Paul a little bit about and tell me what you, I'm not saying it, that I was pushing it or he was pushing it, but talk a little bit about involving like a outside consultancy, involving somebody to come in, even if it meant like a, 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 a management department from UMass or somebody that find somebody that can take a look at the, at our at Cherry Hill as a business and tell us what we are doing well, what, we're, what we need to be doing more of, so to get fresh eyes on the situation, I agree that, 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 that we have rich ideas from people who have been uh, golfing there for a long time or who are very invested and care about the community also. Fresh eyes also, I think, would be, would be helpful for us in saying, how can we make this work better than it works right now? Um, you know, what should our next steps be in terms of enlivening this? If our goals are this, this, and this, about building a clubhouse culture and bringing people in. What is the, you know, what are the steps for us to get there? Um, and so to get fresh eyes, outside eyes, third party, third party assessment would be part of that also. Sanjay. Two thoughts about Cherry Hill. First, regarding the clubhouse and also the human infrastructure at Cherry Hill, by which I mean John Quello. I just want to go on the record as saying that the wintertime users, as represented by Amherst Nordic Ski Association, uh, believe in, and support the idea that that physical infrastructure, the clubhouse, and the human infrastructure, a superintendent, a salaried superintendent, John in our case, are crucial to the continued and improved wintertime recreation opportunities at the facility. And that the, the, the physical facility, the building should be, rather than any notions that it should be moving towards abandonment, mm -hmm. should be moving towards enhancement, towards 12 months for season use as a, as a town recreational facility. And that similarly, the successful wintertime recreation programs are highly dependent on uh, the presence of a salaried superintendent maintainer at the site. Um, 
as currently formulated wintertime sports do not generate any revenue for the facility. We're aware of that, um, accepting very modest hundreds of dollars donations, donations. That, the, that the ski association makes towards maintenance of some of the grooming equipment. I think that skiers are very open to the idea of there being some sort of fee structure for use of the facility, as Yusuf said, provided that the um, that the facility that the facility is improved, right? And we've talked about various ways that wintertime recreation might be improved at the facility. So that's the first thing. Um, and Sarah, I hope you don't mind my giving a second comment before you jump in. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I'm as cautious about hiring consultants as anyone on the face of the planet. And yet, uh, over the course of my now 16 years in Amherst, which still makes me very much a newcomer, I'm coming to the realization that you don't get anything without a consultant's report saying that you should do it. I, sorry, am I that, uh, I'm, <laughs> I've become Amherst now. I, I think, I think I, I'm always looking for a way to Involve I, a consultant. <laughs> look, I, I'm sure it's not just Amherst. I, I think it's the way I think it's the way our the way we society and government works these days. Um, uh, so <laughs> I know I'm being recorded. So I, saying don't quote me on this doesn't really work. But <laughs> don't quote me on this. But uh, I and the ski association fully support the engagement of a consultant to study and make recommendations regarding year round use, recreational use of the Cherry Hill property. Um, it's critical, I think, that that consultant be prepared to do a four season analysis and not to simply study the facility as a golf course, as a municipal golf course, because there, are, there continue to be tremendous opportunities for true four season use of the property mm -hmm. uh, and the building and the human capital. Um, in Barb's last season as director of the, 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 the former LSSE, she did actually include in her proposed budget uh, funds for a specific wintertime consultant study. Um, it wasn't supported by the town, and so that never came to be. But um, you know, I, I could still provide some information on what the cost and scope would be for the wintertime part of any uh, of any outside study that might be, might be performed on the property. Thanks. Thank you. Sarah. Yeah, I want to um, endorse Sanjay's point, or at least the part, which is that the, the way I see it, if we only talk about Cherry Hill as a golf course, that is creating a lot of the problem because that's a small constituency and I don't play golf. So I don't see myself. I don't see that it matters to me. All right. But um, I mean, that's its history. That's its obvious use. That's what's done with it in, in the good weather. But I think it's a big mistake only to talk about it as a golf course. I think our signs should not and I can't remember right now if it only says golf course, I, I would like to see it called golf, <clears throat> excuse me, golf and recreation area because it ought to be a four season asset for the town, um, which gives you a much larger constituency. Everybody, <laughs> everybody does something, could do something there at some point in the year. So I think it, um, it just exacerbates the problem only to focus on this as a, as a golf issue. But the thing, the thing about the golf issue is that if you maintain it as a golf course, it, it becomes available for other things you can do year round. So, and, and it's gonna make money during that time. It's not like, you know, um, maintaining a trail that's gonna cost us money, but it doesn't make you any money. If we, if we run it correctly and if we do something with it, we can actually generate income while making it available for a four year, you know, four season use. Yeah, no, Yusuf, that's exactly right. And I, I apologize if that didn't come through clearly in what I was saying. But, uh, you know, again, speaking for myself and I think for the ski association, the ski association supports the continued municipal operation of Cherry Hill as a golf course because the operation of it as a golf course makes possible the level of skiing 
that can be provided at the golf course. And the idea that one can simply cease maintenance of the facility as a golf course and yet continue to have somehow miraculously at no cost to the town equivalent wintertime operations is a total fallacy and and frankly should be called out whenever that argument is made and, and i know that that argument is made right? yes and it, and it and it should be called out as as false when it's made so I, the 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 you know to the degree that in any given year the town is seen as subsidizing the golf course well the town subsidizes i believe all recreational facilities in town um certainly many i've looked at the numbers regarding pools and other things like that um and you know back to sarah's point if you said to skiers well do you support the golf course a lot of them are going to say well i don't play golf right and they say well do you support the golf course if that's what allows skiing to happen the way that you like it they're like oh well i guess <laughs> yeah, it's as true to say that the town subsidizes Nordic skiing. It's very much so. It, yes. Right? It's not, it subsidizes both. It subsidizes all uses. Very much, all very much so. Right. So, um, got to expand the constituency and the conversation. Uh, I, I think that's, uh, I'm happy that you said that because that's kind of where I, I didn't. Uh, I think that's the natural progression of the conversation is to say that, that we do ourselves a disservice by talking about it as a golf course and a golf course in, as a golf entity only. Um, that the, the conversation about subsidizing golf, it's not an issue because the town shouldn't be subsidizing public, public activities. It's an issue because frankly, uh, should we be subsidizing the recreational habits of a of what's perceived as being a very narrow swath of the community uh, uh, of people who could go and find opportunities to do the same thing someplace else. So if it is only, if we are only thinking of it as a golf club and we're only thinking about developing it as a golf club and, and maintaining it as a golf club, then we lose a lot of what I think, uh, what I think makes it, gives it a compelling case to be subsidize we a lot of things that we subsidize we subsidize because it's for the greater good we, we subsidize because it allows a, such a such a wide range of the amherst community to come and use the space for skiing to come and use the space for winter fest to come and use the space for all the different things that that uh it it becomes present for if which is one of the reasons why i started out by saying you know i haven't seen a full season of golf here but but uh, you know, when, when members uh, and golf insiders were telling me we need to do something about the, the clubhouse atmosphere, if it is a cultural center, if it is a community center where those different pieces that use it come together and, and form a community, then it offers value other than just showing up, hitting a ball and, and going home that's where we lose the argument if we don't take the next steps in the in the process of trying to transform it from being a golf subsidy to being a community recreational uh, center carolyn starting to think there's a lot of fodder in your um your little handout here for other meetings and conversations um so I don't know what we do with that. I, I mean, we can't get to it all sitting yeah. here, but I don't want to lose track of it either. So I will, can we move that to another meeting or? We can move, we can definitely table this and move it to another meeting. I've spoken, uh, the last couple meetings, I've spoken at some length about the feeder programs and my intentions with the feeder programs. You can see that if you have any suggestions or, or observations about that. If uh, I should say, if anybody has something you desperately want to bring up right now about it, we can certainly do that. We don't have to completely table it here, but I was thinking the same thing that Carolyn was thinking. The strategic plan is, some of you all were involved in that, because uh, I've seen your name in the book, uh, uh, but the strategic plan was, uh, you know, I, I've done almost nothing to this, to this date about bringing that back, but really it's a, 
rebuilding the stage in which that 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 process of of reintroducing recreation of consultancy of having of having a group come in and say this is where you need to be pandemic destroyed that we had all sorts of transitions in, in our department and so part of my my objective we kept on seeing it in all of our uh, in all of our uh, uh, budget objectives uh, and I'm like I don't even really know what I'm supposed to be held accountable for and so part of this now is us trying to revisit the findings and the expectations of that strategic plan um, and the last one is a youth center track and turf. I will I will end today. If there aren't any questions directly about strategic plan or feeder programs, uh, we will be. Uh, I, I the next steps on Cherry Hill are going to be to to revisit sort of pulling the crowd, talking about talking about putting together a uh, committee. It's not going to be me trying to trying to make a decision on what do we do next. It it's going to be uh, groups of input that come in on that strategic plan feeder programs if there are any specific questions about those i can take those now then the last one that i wanted to share with you was the youth center track and track and turf the youth center i can briefly just say that the uh, uh youth center we're still i think i mentioned this in the last meeting we're in a little bit of a holding pattern right now about where we're moving with that i hope to have a better sense of that for the next uh, for the next commission meeting, but right now it's been nothing, no, no advancement there as we're starting to sort of turn on that in terms of what my role is going to be in that process. Uh, track does have a little bit of information here that's not written up into my goals here because both of these two, youth center more now, is outside of my immediate recreation interest track the track is very much not my own thing but if it were to all of a sudden appear right now then it would become part of my own departmental goals but uh, uh, i would like to ask sarah to share where the where the uh, uh situation is with the track before we leave right so ray's talking about <clears throat> excuse me the regional high school track you remember that they submitted an application to CPAC, the Community Preservation Act Committee last fall <clears throat> to resurface the track, rebuild it um, in its current location. Um, CPA was not happy with that proposal because as you may remember, the town <clears throat> had sponsored a study of the downtown recreational fields school and town owned a few years ago and the um, uh, the plan that everybody seemed excited about involved turning the track 90 degrees, uh, which allowed better layout for other playing fields, um, more sensibly oriented with respect to the, the sunrise and sunset. So teams didn't have, one team didn't always have the sun in its eyes um, and general field improvement. So we CPAC, CPAC did not take a vote on the track proposal at the time. We asked for more information um, and the school came back to us just uh, earlier this month, really um, late May with a new proposal that uh, a, new, a new request or, re, or rather updated request to CPA for funds for a project that the regional school committee has already endorsed um, along with a funding plan. So the schools are still asking and CPA did approve this request for $800,000 to rebuild the track, but um, only CPA money will only go for it if it is reoriented if it is turned 90 degrees. Um, if the school, is, school system is successful in raising all the funds necessary to do that, then the CPA funds can, can be used for that purpose. If they are not successful in raising enough money to do that larger project and can only, if, can, can only um, uh, rebuild the track in its current location, um, 
the CPA funds will not be granted for that purpose. So, so CPA approved that request. Um, you may remember that we only recommend um, to town council that they approve since they're the ones who hold the purse strings. So um, a report will be going to town council um, soon, I hope by the end of the month, um, asking for their support, which I expect they will give since they ratified the school's request for borrowing. It's, it's very complicated, but, um, but I should say that the, um, <clears throat> The, the school district's plans, both, both options, either rebuild in place or this larger effort that involves turning, turning the track and putting artificial turf field in the center, um, uh, asks for funds from all four, all four towns that are part of the regional school system. So it's not all, hopefully not all on Amherst to make it happen. So, that's where that's at. Um, I should just add that because I'm going off this commission at the end of the month, I'm therefore also going off CPA and uh, this body needs to designate a new representative um, and hopefully get that to the town manager who then also has to get town council's approval, even though you all get to decide who it is, still needs. Yeah. I get, anyway, so that that all takes a while, and the committee generally starts work. Um, it's serious work at the beginning of October, so um, I hope you'll get that ball rolling. Um, it's a great committee. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so San, Sanjay volunteer is second. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sanjay, really? I, I don't have this. I don't have the gallery view. Are you making go ahead, that? Go ahead, Sanjay. Sanjay really? I'm at, I have I have questions. Wonderful. <laughs> I'll I'll well, try to keep them brief, Sarah. Does, uh, does the eight hundred thousand that's been allocated does that represent a single year or multiple years of the typical recreation part of the CPA allocation? Okay. First of all, we've we've recommended it, it hasn't been granted. <clears throat> I, understand. I understand. Yeah, it would be it would be a borrowing. It's it's too big to be paid for out of the CPA fund cash. You know, it's <clears throat> the, the money would be borrowed and it's up to the town to decide based on the bond market, if it's, you know, over five years or if it's over 10 years, that's CP, CPAC doesn't have control over that. We do see, and I'm happy to send to the committee or maybe it's at the, at this, on the CPAC website, um, the finance department is prepared a schedule of, of all of the borrowing, the current borrowing of CPA fund that CPA funds are paying back over time because there are many projects. Some of them are finishing this year, next year, you know, so they roll off and new ones come on. Um, so I, they pr presumably modeled the, you know, the yearly cost with a lot of assumptions about interest, interest rates and the like. Um, probably on the order of $100,000 for 10 years, including, you know, to include the bond interest. Yeah, I guess, but what I'm wondering is whether, if everything comes together, right, if the recommendation is accepted by the council and the other conditions regarding private fundraising and other towns and reorientation, if everything comes together, does the CPA commitment to the track and field project, I mean, is it going to essentially preclude other recreational CPA allocations for the coming, for some coming number of years? It doesn't preclude them. Um, depending on what the, um, what is called new revenue, kind of the new money available to CPA every year, 10% of that, at least 10% has to go to recreation or open space projects. And debt payments on recreation and open space mm -hmm, mm -hmm. projects count towards that 10%. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it, won't it won't preclude more. It might satisfy 
uh, the bare minimum because like the North Common project part, which I think will start happening soon, half of that is recreation money. So there, I think, um, I think all the categories, the, the, the historic preservation, community housing, open space and recreation, did I say them all? Um, uh, they, they have all borrowed money for projects in the past. So it's, it, I, I don't think it's gonna limit funds for recreation projects in particular. It is of course true that the more, <laughs> the more money um, has been borrowed, the more of any year's CPA funds goes to debt payments. Yep. You know, that's true, but um, it doesn't automatically do anything as far as future rec projects. Thanks. Questions on track, questions on CPA. Oh. Yes, Matt. I just had for my for my minutes, what was the amount that the school committee has to has to raise? Oh my gosh. Do the on. school community, the school community, I mean. Mm -hmm. I believe they have, and it's the hurricane boosters is, is yeah. boosters. part of that fundraising. I think they've set themselves a goal uh, higher than than kind of what is needed immediately because they want to anyway i think their goal is two million dollars but okay. of course the cpa fund is is separate from that <laughs> right okay questions on cpa questions on the track and I would just remind you all and anyone watching, just for the record, that C by law, CPA funds cannot be used on turf fields. So that part of the project. Really? Can't see. Yeah. <laughs> artificial turf or any. Artificial. artificial this, mm -hmm. really? Wow. That's, a, that's part of state legislation or town? The whole state. The whole thing. It's only a state program that towns either vote to participate in or they, or they don't so but the state uh, the state authorizing legislation prohibits funding of artificial turf fields specifically yes also also in the recreation category for basically for permanent structures like i don't think you can build a gym or stadium right. yep. but but uh, could you build a natural grass field Yes. Oh, yes. Sure. We we. That's just, fascinating. Um, I learned something today. This is this oh, is actually I thought really I, I fascinating. Thought I'd said, I thought I told you. Well, I'm glad I mentioned it. Then. Oh, you probably did. <laughs> well, well, now you have particular <laughs> interest. Yeah. Um. I don't know. A track. A track is okay. Yes, an artificial <laughs> river track is okay. But I wasn't around because because it's not it's not a surface pretending to be grass. <laughs> is it pretending just, to be clay? We just, I don't know. <laughs> we just we just want our surfaces to be honest. That's what that's what we want. Right. Okay, so. Uh, we need so, to pick a next our next meeting. Oh, hold on, Ray. Go. It, it, yes. Sorry, just to finish up, if Sanjay is indeed volunteering, I think we need to vote. No, really, no, I think he, we have he, to. He wasn't. I'm, I'm, real, I'm really, I'm really not volunteering. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, oh, I'm Sarah. So, Sarah, you I'm didn't. So Sarah, you didn't have gallery. <laughs> you have a gallery view. I just, as you were talking about the the position opening, Sanjay was waiting to ask a question with his hand up. So oh, I, I, think so I, I think he's, well, I think he volunteered. No, no, no. I mean, let me, I, I mean, I'm potentially interested though. The second question, and it would probably be better for everyone's time if Sarah and I talk about this offline, because mm -hmm. I don't really think it's a commission meeting issue. I need, yeah. I would, I need to understand what the conflict of interest rules are on the CPAC committee, because there's a high likelihood that things would come before the committee that are related to organizations I'm president of. And I, I just need, I would need to understand those issues before I committed to volunteering. I'm interested, but I have not yet volunteered. Okay, all right, <laughs> happy to talk with you. Well, when somebody volunteers or whatever, I think, I think the committee, commission, this, bo this body needs to have a formal vote and then pass that along. Thank you. 
next meeting. How are we on our calendars? Uh, we are right now in mid-June for our July meeting. Uh, we can go, are there any Mondays that don't work for people in July? I think the fourth is a Monday, right, Ray? <laughs> the fourth is a Monday. <laughs> we will not do a fourth. Other than that, everything's okay with me. Um, you want to try mid-July? Uh, we're in mid-June right now. We can try and go mid-July. Uh, Eleventh or eighteenth? Yeah. I prefer the eighteenth. Eighteenth would be great. Go right smack dab in the middle of the month. Um, seven p.m. Seven p.m. Uh, Yusuf, are you okay with seven o'clock? We, I think, people kind of drifted towards seven as opposed to six last time. Yep. I hope that wasn't That's a problem fine. for you. That's fine. So we'll plan on seven o'clock on July eighteenth. Can't believe Sarah's leaving us. <laughs> what will we ever do? What will we do? You'll we'll give do you a. Fine. You'll do this. Fine. Give you well, a fake we, nose we, and mustache need... and get you another couple years. <laughs> That's... Yeah, we need some more members. I'm. Uh, I I think Forget that. Um, so I'll just get a big net and I'll try and go out there and capture somebody and bring them in and so say you're not well, going to We won't be able to, we won't be able to reach a quorum. Correct. Yeah, but word of mouth from members is also. I spoke to one person who's definitely interested. Uh, so I'm doing a little bit of beating the bushes here, but I did speak to one member. That's one person that's, that may be very interested. It settles one, but now we have two more to try and deal with. And Is Yusuf, it? you're almost done. Oh, I think one more year, right? I was. Done. Oh, you do. Okay. Is it allowed, Ray, to ask if you have received expressions from in, of interest from individuals? I mean, there's someone I know who told me he might be interested, but do you ever <laughs> know who's who Steph the Stefan Antonovich? I, I have heard that name. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I yeah, I do know who that is. Um, if he's I, what I'll probably do is I'll reach out to the people personally here this week and just gauge if they're still interested. Okay. And put it in and try and try and work that in. Yes. Okay. I do know that name. Yeah, I'm pretty um, confident he continues to be interested. But then I'll I'll reach out to him. Uh but uh, I, I guess then in, in lieu of any other information to bring on, we can move for a adjournment. So moved. Uh, all in favor, adjourn. Right. I will see you all on July 18th. Okay, okay. thanks Ray. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye Sarah. Carry on. <laughs> Bye.